Welcome to Bups' Dharma Lounge, a place and a time to relax and explore all things Dharma. In this episode, I have the pleasure to converse with Sensei Jose Shinzan Muhan Palma, an ordained Zen priest and Dharma heir of Joan Jiko Halifax Roshi. He's the founder of the Open Gate Zen Collective in San Diego, California, with a vision to mentor and teach young people in order to create a Zen Hispanic community in the USA and Mexico. Hi, I'm Bubsa Frank Jude, and before getting into my chat with Shinzan Muhan Palma, I'd like to offer gratitude to all those who subscribed and or have offered Donna. You help make this podcast possible. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe, like, review, and share in order to help bring this podcast to an ever-increasing audience. And today, June 2nd, 2022, I have the delight to meet with my Dahmer brother, who I met back in 2001 while we were both in Zen training with the Korean Zen master, Samu Sunim. So, um, you know, the first thing I want to ask is, you know, I met you as Muhan, and I know that you also got a Shinzan as a Dharma name uh, from uh, uh, Roshi Halifax. So do you prefer being called Shinzan? Would you like me to call you Shinzan? Or if I slip into Muhan, is that going to be okay? <laughs> it's totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Either way. <laughs> Um, so I, I want to take this opportunity to, to first of all say, like, I was thinking about how we met, I didn't realize this. I read your bio that you have your little memoir on your website, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that the retreat that we met in, in Chicago was really your first long extended training. Um, you had met Sunim, I think in Mexico earlier. Yeah. Yeah, we, we met, uh, so it was my first session in the United States, my first retreat, and, and when we met. So, so I had met Sunim years before, and then I did two retreats in Mexico with Sunim. And, and, then, and then later I stopped for two years um, going to the Sangha in Mexico because I, I moved, I moved uh, the border to Ciudad Juarez near to El Paso, Texas. And then, and, and then after two years being without practice, I, I got my visa and, and then I saw the summer retreat and then I just came to Chicago. I went to Chicago and, and even soon he didn't know that. Mm. He didn't know that. He was quite totally surprised. He you know, was just, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we met. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, and, um, and we were painting together. And... Yeah, we were painting and doing the windows. <laughs> and the thing that really struck me is, you know, obviously it was silent, Youngman Junction, right? It was silent, mm -hmm. uh, but we were doing work practice together. And at that time, you did not speak any English. Yeah, and I right. certainly know, like, you know, I know restaurant Spanish at best. Yeah. And yet there was a real connection and we were able to communicate through yeah. gestures and lots of smiling, you know. Yeah. And then like remember two years later in 2003, arriving at the Toronto Temple, uh -huh. and you came out speaking English and gave me this big hug. I was like, oh, my God, it's so wild. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember the. I guess Bob Chi, Bob Chi came and helped us a little bit with the translations yeah. when we were having tea and the or coffee and the end of the retreat and Chicago. Yeah. yeah, that's when we actually got to a little a little a little conversation. But I, I jumped ahead a little bit in a way, and but um, mm -hmm. you obviously are from Mexico. You were born in Veracruz. Yeah, I was born in Veracruz and in the city of Cordoba is five five hours south from mexico city southeast 
okay. just near to the Gulf, so that area of the and, Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. And how, like, um, from there, like, how were you exposed to Buddhism for the first time? Was it through books or movies or like how, no, how did you even come to that? Yeah, I. So I went to to Mexico City to study at university. Um, and I was having quite crisis, you know, I was around, uh, well, uh, yeah, it, it was 20. When I was 20, I started having really hard time with, with my say life and things didn't, they were not doing you know, in the university and financial situation. So I was in a struggling. And then I went through a lot of books and before Buddhism, I, I went to yoga, to yoga. I was doing yoga. I became vegetarian for maybe a year or two years. And then I was doing some kind of meditations, but very, very rare. And then I went to a lot of psychology, but very old psychology from the 50s, you know. Mm. And, and then Eric Fromm and Carl Jung and I think Abraham, Abraham Maslow, something. Mm. This, Abraham yeah. Maslow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. And, and then, and then I, get, I, I came across to Aldous Huxley. And then the whole thing about psychedelics came out, but I didn't do anything like that. Mm -hmm. And then I was just about pointed out to different reality and and then Carlos Castaneda book came and the same time a Zen books appear. And so by the time I was in, in university, I was 23, 24. And and the thing it was that was in a relationship and my girlfriend of that time, my yes girlfriend the, I was struggling with a relationship, so I became quite like a therapist, you know? I wanted to help her and, and start reading books. And then what I, just reading books to understand just or psychology. And, and then as uh, one, one author mentioned it about Zen practice. He just mentioned it about Zen. Mm -hmm. There was another way to know yourself. And that was so interesting about Zen and, and, and like I just the world. And then I was in university, I went to the library and, and then I picked it up. My first book that I read it was The Three Pillars of Zen. Uh, it's always either going to be that or Suzuki Roshi. It's just two, two, two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I started doing it in my, in my home, practicing, following the instructions. And, and, and after, because I remember very well after I started practicing in the summer uh, with the book. In December, I came across a flyer from, from Sam Suni that he was visiting Mexico. And then I went to the, uh, to the lectures and that's it. Oh, it's funny. There's, there's a parallel. I'm like, where, I mean, you're in your 40s, I think, right? Right now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna be 50. You're year. gonna be 50, okay. But there's yeah. still, there's 15 years difference between us and yet oh. the parallels <laughs> are really interesting. Know. Yeah. Wow. Um, because I, uh, my, my sister who was 15 years older than me died when I was 16. And that's what mm. got me interested in psychology. I took, I was in high school, but it was um, a college prep, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So all of a sudden I was taking these um seminars in like existentialism uh oh, death yeah. you know and then i also discovered my first buddhist books um but it was all like just reading you know and then when i was about 18 19 i started 18 i started doing yoga and somewhere along the line i read that the buddha had experienced such bliss in his deep meditations but then yeah. when he came out of the meditation into the world of his sensories, you know, like nothing had really changed at the root. You know, he still grasped after the pleasant, pushed away the unpleasant. So I, it kind of reignited my interest in, in Buddhism. And I'll never forget, I went to this store out in Jamaica, Queens, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the bottom shelf and 
you know, it was rickety shelf and a book fell from above, hit me in the head. It was Zen mind, beginner's mind. Oh, wow. And when wow. I saw Suzuki Roshi, wow. I was like, I have to do this, you know? Yeah. So, wow. So that's, that's, that's very good story. We both come to it from, you know, and, and I think this is a really common thing that needs to be put out. Like most people don't wake up feeling really great about their life, deciding they want to do Zazen. Oh, yeah. Right? It's, it's a response to finally acknowledging Dukkha. Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and and i think that's the first thing that um mm -hmm. really needs to be kind of emphasized you know it's like yeah this is a response to the human Condition. existential situation yeah. yeah yeah for me it was uh when i when i it was so interesting this, oh well you know the, the experience or the story that i had is the i was in university and the and then I broke out with my girlfriend, with the person that was dating at that time. And I was going to the school, to university. And it's a big, big campus. It was the National University in Mexico City. So, so when I, um, so I took the subway and then all the way until the stop and then get out and, and walk, you know, in the campus and then get to the school. But that day, I, I get it because I was struggling with, with you know, heartbroken and, 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 and then thinking about her and I was sad. So I, I get out one stop before just to walk and to get some kind of, you know, like a fresh air. And, and then I walk and I was just in, you know, the pathways of the big university. And then I went to a cafe, uh, to a cafeteria, you know, to like a coffee shop in the university there. And, and my intention it was like a, to find another girl, you know, to meet somebody <laughs> new, <laughs> you know, let's see if I can find somebody. But before they got to the coffee shop, that was the flyer mm. of SUNY. Oh. Yes, no, it's so interesting. And they, and they just took me yeah. in a different direction in my life. And then mm -hmm. in 2001, you did the Chicago, and that's mm -hmm. when you, um, you became a, a formal Dharma student in the seminary program, yeah? Yeah, I, yeah, I started with SUNY. Um, I became Dharma student, like I signed up for the program in 1998. Oh. 1998. And then I did two years in Mexico City, um, with Tuan, Tuan Suni. Um, and, you know, to come to United States, it was quite like a dream, you know, mm -hmm. so, like a really project. Um, so I moved to the, to the border because I found a job and also with the intention to get my, my visa. It was going to make it easier to come here. And then I, and then, and then I went to, in 2001, I came and I was in the like a one year, you know, in the Dharma Dharma training, Dharma student program. So I was in one year. So when I went to the to the uh, to the retreat with Sunim, and that time he after he gave me the the other okay casa or, or wow. ratsu, you know, the, <clears throat> the second year. So I became the and it was the second year. And then he invited me. He said, "Hey, are you still interested in the training?" And then I say, yeah, yeah. And then I say, well, come back. So I returned to Chicago in October after 9-11. Mm -hmm. I, I flew to Chicago for yeah. um, 10 weeks to be with him. And then <clears throat> mm -hmm. when was the transition to the Toronto temple? So I was, I, I did in, in default, you know, we soon in practicing in, in Chicago temple. And at that time, they were planning to buy the new temple in, in Toronto, you know, the big... The building. big building, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that we met many times there. Uh, so, <clears throat> so soon you say, come, come one year with me, but you are going to do the training in Toronto. And then I say, okay. Okay, one year, it's good. So I went back uh, 
for holidays, for Christmas time, New Year's Eve, and also the retreat and, and, and Mexico with him. And, and then I did the retreat and Sunny saying, when are you coming back and blah. He was really, you know, pushing me to come back soon. And then I said, well, I'm going back and really, because in that time I have a other girlfriend and I wanted to spend some time. And yeah, and, and then I came in 2002 to Toronto in February and first I arrived to Chicago because they say, meet me in Chicago and we drive you. We were, we were driving. And then I went to an Arbor Temple. We spent one night and then finally we get in, in Toronto in the old building. Then now they, they move back. Do you know that? Yes, yeah. Move back. <clears throat> that big building was mm -hmm. taken down and now it's a big skyscraper. Oh, wow. Um, with um, a kind of Whole Foods type supermarket on the bottom mm -hmm. and apartments above. Like, wow. Yeah, very different. Yeah. <clears throat> 297 College Street. <laughs> I, um, what was great about that location, though, is it was right over by <clears throat> Little oh, Italy. Yeah. And, oh, um, yeah. The Italian meals that we would have at the end of the uh, student council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Italian oh. and also the end of the bag. It was in Chinatown. And then, so you were, you were on the, I, I was on the Dharma teacher track. You were on the priest track. And you got ordained. Mm -hmm as a priest by Sunim in 2004, five, was it? Yeah, 2004. And then my, 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 you know, one of my aspirations and dream was to just to live with a same teacher. And I had the opportunity. I was not thinking about being a priest or anything like that. And, and then being resident in, in the Toronto temple, so, Soon you say, okay, so you are going to be a priest because you are living here. If you don't live in the temple, you will be Dharma teacher, but you are here, so you are going to be a, <laughs> a, a priest. And then I was fine, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it was in 2004. Yeah. And how long were you there before you then went to Upaya? So Upaya, I was uh, four years in Toronto with him. Okay. Um, do you want to speak a little bit about what prompted that move at all? Or? Yeah, 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 it's fine. I, when I was, when I was with Sunim, uh, it was, you know, he was a very strong teacher, I would say tough, and, and then, and I was there, but at some point I didn't, like a we miss, you know, related with training support, like a, I felt like I needed to do some kind of therapy or something going on because mm. I was struggling and I was getting depressed and, and, and then I was doing this schedule and, and then we couldn't, we couldn't meet, you know, where we at and, 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 and then I just, I, I burn out basically. Yeah. I burn out. And so, so I asked him, you know, I had to leave. I had to leave. I was just totally burned out. And, and it was hard for him. And also it was hard for me. And, and then I left. But at the same time, when um, part in my, like uh, one year before maybe, or when I did my ordination, I finished. And then I was thinking of oh, the possibility to study with another teacher. Like if there was just to explore mm. and because as you know we we with Sunin it was only him yeah. we then we were not supposed to and you had never really him. studied with anyone else before, no right yeah so yeah no, it's almost like a like a, my first love you know yeah yeah and, and that makes a big difference you know because I I I had studied with various teachers mm -hmm. and the longest one was actually with Thich Nhat Hanh for like mm. almost almost 12 years before Mm -hmm. uh, going into the seminary. So I, I really think that that's a really, it's interesting because in Korea, mm -hmm. it was the kind of tradition that you, the student actually went from monastery to monastery. They didn't just zero in on they one teacher, one. Yes. you know? Yeah. And then also I was, 
to be in, in here in North America, so you you are most exposed to to Dharma. You know, you see the Tricycle Magazine and that time Shambhala song, and then you see all different teachers, and and I was like, okay, there are many different tastes, mm -hmm. oh, tastes of Dharma. And that was another part of of to to leave, but most it was, I was tired, and then I left. Um, and then when you know, and it was no nice broke out, and so I went back to Mexico and I spent some time. And then John Halifax, uh, uh, I met John Halifax in, in the in the temple because we rented. If there was a event for her on the basement, and the person who connected me with John Halifax, it was Elizabeth. Uh, uh, Kongwa, you remember? Yeah, Kongwa. Yeah, yeah Kongwa, Elizabeth and Ciso. So she came first to Paya mm. because she left Toronto and then and then and then came and yeah. <clears throat> cool. That must have it, been really interesting because obviously there's so many different changes, right? You go from, I mean, Sunim is a Korean, so he's like you know, and and Joan Halifax is Western North American, male, female. Mm -hmm. And also one of the things that I've uh, often felt I've had to kind of share with students is um, Zen, you know, when, when Zen was brought to, to a, the North America, it was mainly Japanese teachers. Mm -hmm. So I think in the mind of most Americans, Zen is Japanese. Mm -hmm. And I often say like, you know, what you think is Zen is really Japanese aesthetics. Yes, because it's so different between a Korean temple and oh, a yeah. Japanese. Oh, yeah, or something, you know, and Chan and Chinese. Yeah. So like, yeah. how was that? Because like, it's there's some different forms mm -hmm. and, and actual practices and all that. So how was that transition for you? And, and is there any is in your own practice? Have you integrated or have you really just fully gone into like, more of the Japanese uh, practices or anything? Oh, I, 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 you know, I think um, I, I was related with forms. I really love Zen. The Zen is how, how uh, Sunin show us, you know, he was mentioning a lot about sincere heart all the time, sincere mm -hmm. heart. Sincere heart. Yeah. And, and then, and there was not so much emphasis about about the forms, you know, about, oh, you had to keep this, you know, the hands this way, and you had to walk this way, that way, doing this bell, that bell. So there was not so much in that. There was a lot about heart and devotional practice. And when I came to Paya, I have a, obviously it took me a little while. I have quite a version. It was, for me, it was too much. It was, for me, I saw like, a, like a, a way of like a more like a performance mm. you know almost like a ballet that you really perform or yeah. present much more present. choreographed right like, choreographed. I remember exactly. in Zen Mountain Monastery exactly. you had to enter in with a certain foot uh, yeah even you know and, and yeah. in that none of that was ever the, like no in, in no and then and then, and then and then so it was having hard it took me a little while even uh, now I, to be honest, I, 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 I didn't learn the test by, by memory, like we did with the Dharani and the Har Sutra and the, the Korean chants. So then on me and, and then, and those, you know, as I was reading, you know, the, the Chan, Chan books. Uh, but, but yeah, until you know, certain years, I I I got the appreciation for the form and, and also what if what the form is made for. But finally, like I see, um, what the form is important, mm -hmm. you know, as a way of practice. And now building new sangha here in San Diego, there is it doesn't have comparison with Samantha Monastery or, or Upaya. They, they are really beautiful places and where the form is appropriate, you know? Mm -hmm. And here I say, I'm not gonna make people crazy with, <laughs> with bow here and they walk this way and that way, you know? So we are, we are I am building the, 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 
appropriate form for the place as a way of practice. Mm -hmm. And then I know that some students, because they have never had the experience to live in a monastery when a center, they want that because they think that that's them. Yeah. You know, like uh, the, <laughs> the Japanese aesthetic. And, they, and then I had to really know it's not. Yeah. Oh, you are doing the form because there is a reason, there is a need. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it's so funny. Um, I, I think in the in the seminary the second mm -hmm. year is the yellow really bright casa in yes, yes, Korea, yes, in yes, 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 right yellow, yeah 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 and i remember being in um because i i lived so close to zen mountain monastery that i would often practice there and oh I, yeah and, and i did a session there and i came out wearing my casa and the sun hit it and some of the other monks were looking like, holy crap, it was the only bright thing in the whole Zendo, you know, because it's all like black. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, one of the one of the people uh, at Zen Mountain says, what, you know, if you live 40 minutes from here, but you go all the way to Toronto or Chicago, why? And I always mm -hmm. said that I would joke that I liked kimchi, but really, mm -hmm. the thing that I responded to was the I was like, if you could imagine Zen originating in Southern Italy, that's more like Korean Zen, mm. you know, and that, like you were saying, like, it's all about the heart, you know, and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and for me, um, it's interesting, because like I, when, when our Sangha uh, chants the Heart Sutra, we, we chant it in English, and we chant it with the Motok, like one syllable, so more like the Japanese way, mm -hmm. you know, monosyllabic mm -hmm. kind yeah, yeah. of thing. But we do Yabel, mm -hmm. and for me, that's like a love song, you know? Oh, yeah. And I remember when, when like, I, I, I wasn't really into chanting initially, but doing Yabel every day, and I'll, I'll never forget, because I was telling to Sunim, I was like, because he was always saying at some point your voice breaks through or something, you know? And, oh, yeah, yeah. and I had this emotional Mm -hmm. response and I was sharing it with him but I was trying to struggle to like what was happening and Sunim goes it's emotionally satisfying and I remember thinking that's a good enough reason for Zen you know because like mm -hmm. I would never have, I don't think I would have ever heard anything like that from my mm -hmm. Japanese teachers you know mm -hmm. like Sunim, it's emotionally satisfying and that was good enough that was you know yeah 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 so now um mm -hmm. you are based in san diego mm -hmm. right? and um i i'm very inspired by what you in in your blog about your um you know reaching out to the hispanic community and all that so you, do you want to talk a little bit about your vision and what you're creating there in san diego yeah um when i left upaya it's this is you know it's a very interesting journey uh, um um as an immigrant and and then you have to come and do integration because you know? i am like a, i was trained in an american buddhism you know zen, zen buddhism in, 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 in america uh, i spent more time here than mexico so i learned american buddhism and and then in some point, I was quite, quite um, neglected or just pushing away my heritage. Mm. Uh, and then, and then you know, I got the whole influ influence of American culture. Uh, and one teacher pointed out, he, she was asking me those questions and then, and then about Mexico and, and then and then I could have got it when she was asking me why she was asking me. Mm. And finally, later, I, and thanks to the teenager retreat I am teaching, they do now the diversity, inclusivity, and, and, and then the honor of your background and heritage, doing those workshops as a, and part of the staff as a training that we, uh, you know, serve the teens. Uh, I realize, you know, like I bring light into my, this is me. So instead to moving away or pushing away or to be ashamed for that, just honoring, you know. 
and then and then it became just natural and, and who I am and well and then I I when I left Upaya uh, Mexico um, right now is very still very green Buddhism and and you had to it's a lot of invest you know like financially and and then you cannot be supported by by the Dharma it will be very hard. Mm. Uh, just doing just dharma and then so i thought like a, mm, i think it's and also i like being living here in america and then i have more what we say more gigs you know more opportunities <laughs> to teach and then moving around you know people are more so in travel teach you, you yeah know, traveling yeah. teaching you know people are, are more aware about buddhism about meditation and, and then i say okay i can spend some time here and then and that I start thinking where I to locate, to when I should be located. And then I did this kind of research and, and the internet about, about Latino communities. And then one when it came out was it was Florida, it was Miami. <laughs> it was I go to Miami, I said, well, I don't know anybody. <laughs> and then and the other one, it was very strong, it was Denver. Denver, Colorado. I said, no, it's and then I, I wanted, personally, I wanted to be close to the ocean. Mm. You know, after many years being in, in the desert, I want to go to, close to the, to the ocean. And I have been here in San Diego. As you know, San Diego is a beautiful place. <laughs> you have the weather and it's beautiful. Every summer we go. To yeah. And, then, and you don't have San Diego, as you know, if you know about California, the cities that gets more attention is San Francisco and LA, you know, Bay Area and LA. And San Diego is like a bad San Diego. <laughs> but it's a very good city, you know, yes. good city. And then I and I have come several times. And then I thought, oh, San Diego. And then later I said, okay, Tijuana is near. And so I can get the flight from Tijuana to see my parents. And, mm -hmm. and then I came. And then and when I came to explore, it was no easy because I didn't know basically anybody. And, and I saw the prices of renting and the life here is very expensive. And I was like, oh, I was quite disappointed. That week that I came, that I came and also because I have three Dharma talks going on. And so in one of these Dharma talks, uh, this, uh, um, this this friend, or and the time was not still my friend, but, but my friend yet, uh, but Jeff Slomny, that he created the Dharma Bond Temple. So I uh, did a talk in, in his place, and then he invited me to say, what are, you, what are your plans? I said, well, I plan to move to San Diego, but I'm looking for a place, but it's very expensive. I said, well, you don't need to look, you don't need to look for a place right here. Mm -hmm. You can stay here. <laughs> so it was this uh, love, in downtown, they became a temple and very nice spot, very warm, small. And then he gave me basically a closet just to have my bed there. I said, you can stay here you know, as much as you want and help me to, to, to support the Sangha. I said, okay. And, and then he had two places. One was the downtown temple, another one in, in another neighborhood is called El Cajon. So he was taking care of that, and then and I was taking care of downtown, and then I stayed with him for a year, and that was a heavy connection. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, but you asked me about this this Latino, and then anyway, so so I said, okay, San Diego, South San Diego. I, I'm sure there are many many Latino communities, and then I tried to to build. It has not been easy, you know, for Latino. But thanks to, to soon and the pandemic, right now I had two sitting groups, one in, in Mexico City and one in Colombia, one in Bogota. Oh, wow. They, they came through Upaya, the connections. And so I had the two people down there that they, they, they are the facilitators of the sitting group. So I am working with them and they hope they will ordain to become a priest. Uh, and then just to help them, to support them, to, you know, to build the sand in their places. 
Wow, that's great. Yeah, they have been fantastic just thanks to, to Zoom. Yeah. And how are things right now in San Diego? Are you uh, when, are mm -hmm. you practicing in real life together or is it still online or? No, no, we, we open we opened uh, uh, in May 21st, just just one week ago, oh, one okay. week ago, we uh, we opened to the to the public and and then I have the whole schedule almost every evening I have something going on. And Saturdays is our, our main day, very similar like a Sunni used to do, mm -hmm. two sittings and Dharma talk. Cool. And, and Sunday, so that's Saturday. Well, I look forward, I, you know, um, as I said, I'm going to be there in July. It'll be really wonderful to practice with your Yeah, son. no, please come. Maybe you will get up. <laughs> okay. We have Always to ready. <laughs> Did I ever tell you, you know, it's funny. Um, do you know Claude Anchin Thomas? Yes. Uh, well, I, the name, the name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he and I did some um, days of mindfulness together in New York City. Uh huh. And one year he was invited to teach in Assisi, uh, Italy, for uh -huh. um, a yoga conference and then to do a retreat in Liguria. So I went as his assistant. And I was just supposed to ring the bell, watch the time, make sure that he was everywhere he was supposed to be, right? Uh -huh. And we're sitting down in Assisi, 500 mostly Italians, obviously. So there's a translator who's going to be translating. And Claude is sitting there. I'm to his right. And everything is really quiet. And he turns to me and he goes, why don't you give the Dharma talk? Wow. <laughs> I was like, wow okay, yeah nice. talk about being thrown <laughs> in you know that was the first time i ever gave a public dharma talk <laughs> oh wow yeah and then and then now we open the the send up for spanish speakers we have and tuesdays like that so twice a month and then just we started last week so nice. today we don't have until the following week well, and I know we had you mm -hmm. here once in Tucson for a, a Zanzenkai, a day, a day mm -hmm. practice, yeah. remember? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't have a space anymore, but hopefully if that ever happens again, maybe something could be organized because obviously Tucson, there's a huge uh, Latino community. Oh, yeah. And maybe we can do like a, mm -hmm. you know, present you here as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things that I often uh, I'm also doing with this podcast is, you know, the, in the intro, I say it's a place to just, you know, explore all things Dharma. That's my kind of like slogan, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm sure it's the same for you, but like over the course of my life, since I've been exposed to Buddhism, it's over 45 years now, mm. my understanding of Dharma has changed, you know, it's and and i'm sure that it's it may change again if i get to be 80 or something but like over the course of your practice life um what has dharma become to mean for you like if someone who's never heard the term before asks, well what is this dharma thing you know how would you explain it <laughs> i like a quan <laughs> <laughs> i would say how are you <laughs> how are you my friend <laughs> Uh, two ways, you know, one for me, the Dharma is just to really, to be intimate with people, to meet and to support them, to be who you really are, you know, it's like, a, you know, be this, this container based all and say, you are Buddha, you know, you, you, you are okay who you really are fully, you know, so, and then, and then to create any skills, you know, any upayas for, for that person to oh, what we call to wake up you know to understand that understand the interbeing for me is dharma that is dharma dharma is to is uh, for me dharma is to embrace life to get to get rid of of this filter this separation you know i remember your your teacher closed the gap and then I ask you about that. What is it? Close the gap. And you told me, and then I didn't get it. <laughs> From mind mind said, the gap. <laughs> yeah, mind the gap. So that is that's for me. For me, for me, it's dharma. It's just like a, a, how can I 
said, you know, to the person in front of me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and find many, many, many ways. And, and obviously there is, there is the Dharma, you know, from the dictionary, the teachings of the Buddha, and there is a path through the meditation, you wake up to the truth. Yeah. 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 And then, and then when somebody asked me, what is that in the Dharma? I would say, oh, well, it's, it's a path to find yourself, to discover yourself. Yeah, I think, um, I know, mean, like, when you're just saying, like, you know, there's the dictionary, and, and actually, if you look up in a Sanskrit dictionary, Dharma is, it has, I think, the many, the most pages of definitions and explanations, because oh, wow. it's such a core central term in mm. Indian philosophy, you know, wow, um, at the time of the Buddha, other yogis would say, like, hey, you know, whose dharma do you follow or what dharma do you follow and all and they didn't mm -hmm. it wasn't religion that's a western concept dharma mm -hmm. and um what i think started to really open up years ago when i started to read that stuff it's like the root of the word itself is like support wow what, what supports you what gives you support mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's when it really opened up for me because it's like then you know it's my time paying attention to being a father mm -hmm. is dharma my you know mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. gardening feeding my my dog you know it's like dharma becomes i like that you said the first thing you said was intimacy mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. connection yeah so cool and is there any um any final message or anything that you'd like to leave uh, here? And then also, I, um, if you send me, or you could even say here how people can reach you if they want to uh, connect mm -hmm. with your, you and your teachings, especially if they're local, but uh, anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. No, well, thank you. Well, the message, well, like, it's a, a spirituality, you know, Spiritually, a spiritual path is not anymore like a, oh, a hobby or something abstract. I think to cultivate a spiritual path is so important for our humanity. It's like a learning math, mathematics or learning a language or, mm. uh, or economics, something like that. Then we need to find a way how to really, to remember who we really are and to nourish ourselves. So a spiritual path, and then there are many, 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 many spiritual paths, and then requires time, requires prioritize, and, and, and requires discipline, and to learn the technique that allow you to, to really be who you really are, to really wake up. And for us as a Zen practitioners, with meditation practice. And then I have a lot of faith and it's amazing through the through through the time you think that you need a lot of stuff to do practice oh i need this i need that or become please or become this or that or i had to meet the right teacher or i had to go to the monastery and for me with the time of of these years practicing my faith is growing more and more in what we call Zazen, you know, what sitting meditation, just to spend some time sitting or doing nothing, what we said, and pay attention into your breath, into your mind, and that's it. Yeah. And that is gonna take you to wherever you want to go, wherever you want to build, wherever you want to transform, yeah. I, it makes me think, you know, there, there was the philosopher Pascal he was a mm. Western philosopher mm -hmm. and he's, I'm paraphrasing, but he said something like so much of the world's troubles could be resolved if everyone just sat alone in their room for a while, you know, like, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, I tell my students too, it's like, actually it, it's, a, it, it, what feeds a kind of compassionate response is recognizing that everyone is trying to be happy. Mm -hmm. and look at the messed up ways they're trying to go about doing it right but that's mainly because most people don't have the opportunity mm -hmm. to really sit and look investigate mm -hmm. the nature of the mind you know yeah 
And yeah. that's, that's, you know, it's like when you start to see, oh, the mind is kind of crazy, you know, and, and I don't have to believe everything that goes through it. <laughs> you get that freedom. Mm -hmm. and to, yeah, to, to understand this human condition, you know, to be human. In, in this world, yeah. <laughs> Uh, for other. Mm. It's a real pleasure to, to see you again, Muan Shinzan. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. And, uh, thank, um, you, thank you. Yeah. So, you. what's your website address? Oh, yeah. I have. A, yeah, people can visit like a w dot com dot uh, o g zen dot o g zen dot com. Yeah, it's o g. We are okay, the o g. So <laughs> OG is open gate, but it's almost like the original gangster. Is that the purposeful, purposeful fun, pun? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the original thing. Oh, that's and practitioner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> original gangster. <laughs> OG Zen. Though. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining. Oh, you're welcome. Me. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, right. don't hang up. To, <laughs> to chat with you to talk. Okay. We are connected.